when you think about the prophet Joseph Smith, just tell us one word. You can just go around. We don't need to go in order. Just tell us one word when you think of the prophet Joseph Smith after you're studying his life, being here, thinking of being with President Nelson. Yeah. Uh, courage. Courage. Probably selfless. Selfless. Um, he was dedicated. Faithful. Determined. Respectful. Respectful. Oh, that's fabulous. That's great. Patient. Patient. Obedient. Obedient. Hardworking. Hardworking. Did we get everybody? Okay, great. Respectful. Okay. He's a good role model, isn't he? We have more pages of scripture through the prophet Joseph Smith than from any other prophet that we know anything about. Uh, and he only lived to be 38 and a half, at which time his life was taken by an angry mob. But I would like you to make a point to read from Doctrine and Covenants section 135, some maybe tonight. It's one of the few sections of the Doctrine and Covenants that was written by uh, a new president of the church, President John Taylor. But he described that Joseph Smith did more than any other person save only Jesus Christ for the spiritual welfare and well-being of all mankind. So you have a great uh, head start here living in this sacred territory where the uh, feelings of Joseph are so fundamental. I, each time I come here, I look at those oldest, biggest, tallest trees in the sacred grove, and I know that they were there when this sacred event happened. And I think, what a privilege it is for us to, to be the beneficiaries of his knowledge, which he gained not from college or schooling or boarding house. Or, he gained it from God. He gained it from Jesus Christ. He gained it from John the Baptist and Peter and James and John and Moses and Elias and Elijah. And Paul. These people came to him, taught him, which is another reason that you picked a young man to be the instrument through which the restoration would come.